What's up, Patriots fans? Welcome back to another episode here on YouTube of previewing the draft here. I am Mike Dusso, Paul Perillo joining me from Patriots.com. And, you know, Paul, there's been so much over the last couple of months, mock drafts, everything. What we're going to try to do today is maybe boil it all down to, to some key names, kind of the, the key scenarios that, that we see unfolding uh, as far as the, the mock drafts and kind of the, what, what the pundits think. Um, but let's start off right at the top. I know everybody wants a quarterback, five guys. What do you think the Patriots' odds are of trading up and maybe getting one of those guys? Yeah, I, I think it's probably pretty small. And, uh, you know, we, we, you and I have been in agreement on this really from the start. There's five guys that a lot of people think are first-round picks. But in, in our opinion, I, I don't really think there's much of a chance that the Patriots believe there are five guys worthy of first-round picks. They might have one, maybe two. I mean, let's all assume that Trevor Lawrence is one. There might be another guy. And if there is that other guy, I, I think it could be a, a guy like like Justin Fields or maybe Mac Jones, two different kinds of styles. Maybe if one of those guys starts to fall a little bit, Mike, maybe the Patriots might, might want to trade up and maybe get to eight, nine, ten, somewhere in that area if they can and get the guy that they identify. But if you're asking my opinion which way it's going to go, I, I don't think they'll trade up. I think they'll sit tight. It's sure going to be expensive to have to do that. And, and, and you're right. I mean, we saw, you know, San Francisco trade up. I think we're all assuming the quarterback's going to go a third pick. I was a little skeptical at first. I've come around on that. But, uh, <laughs> you know, like you said, maybe if we get to eight and maybe Trey Lance or Mac Jones is there. I mean, of that group, if you could have any of those three guys, though, who, who do you think is your favorite? Yeah, my guy is, is Justin Fields. I think that he played at a high level, uh, showed a lot of toughness, a lot of composure. And, and really, I felt like, his decision to leave Georgia and go to Ohio state where he was going to get a chance to play obviously both at very high levels, sec, big 10. I, I thought that showed a uh, sort of a sense of urgency to get on the field and, and, and get his career started. I think he knew he could play and he wanted to show that to everybody. And really he did over the two years at Ohio state. I think he was very productive. I love his combination of athleticism and passing ability. Uh, again, I mentioned his toughness in the playoffs this past year, took that shot against Clemson turned in probably the best game of his career. And I thought played pretty well against Alabama too. And they were swimming uphill a lot of that game. It's tough to play from behind against a team like that, but fields would be my pick. Yeah. I mean, we got to, you mentioned Alabama. I think just, you know, Mac Jones, obviously the connection is, is, is a one that's happened a lot over the years between Nick Saban and Bill Belichick. And I know a lot of people see that accuracy and maybe think a little bit of Tom Brady there with Mac Jones. I know he's not quite as experienced, but he's another one to talk about, but I agree, Paul, I think it's, it's a tall, tall order to get them to trade all the way up. Um, but if they say at 15 and that's, you know, I, I think if, if we were maybe making a projection that that's probably makes the most sense. Um, you know, there's been some popular guys there, but, but, you know, who do you see as kind of the, uh, as the best fits there, if they just stay at 15, it seems like somebody could fall to them. That that's pretty good. Yeah. Again, this could be, you know, those guys could start slipping again and you might want to trade up for someone other than a quarterback, you know, maybe, you know, one of the offensive tackles, uh, as an example, if, uh, if a guy like Rashawn Slater, you know, was available at, say, 12, you know, maybe you want to slide up and get him. Uh, but to me, Mike, um, I think there's a really good chance that you could see the top 10 picks of this draft, maybe more, all on the offensive side of the ball. And that, to me, screams defense. If you're going to sit at 15, I think you have a chance to get someone who you might think is one of the best two or three defensive players available in the entire draft. And and I would lean to cornerback. Uh, I know you and I are in agreement on this. So J.C. Horn from South Carolina and Patrick Sertan from Alabama, two bigger guys, six, six foot, six one, um, you know, a little bit of length to them, but they can run. Um, and uh, I, I just like the idea of, of adding a cornerback with Stephon Gilmore's status sort of uncertain. J.C. Jackson signed his restricted free agent tender, but, you know, could be the last year of him in New England. I think you're going to need some starting caliber cornerbacks soon. Might not be a bad idea to get one at number 15. Yeah, J.C. Horn, a great name. I mean, all, all both those guys fit great. And, you know, we throw Caleb Farley maybe in that mix as well, who was a guy when we started this, we thought he might be the top guy. But but I think all three of them kind of fit what the Patriots do. Yeah, but do, Farley's but... father's not in the NFL. wasn't an NFL player. So <laughs> we're going to go Sertan and Horn. Yeah, he, back surgery. I mean, the other two guys, <laughs> Horn and Sertan, tore up their pro days. I mean, both guys just look like they were made in a cornerback factory. Uh, so yeah, they'd be great fits, but you know, I think they've had a late push, but really the most popular guy over the course of these last few months has been, been Penn state linebacker, Michael Parsons. And uh, you know, I, I know what I see. And, and I mean, his fit is pretty obvious in the Patriots uh, defense. Yeah. I like him a lot too. Uh, tremendous athlete. I think that's the kind of player that really the Patriots defense has been lacking. 
they have some smart, you know, players that they can do different things with and, and scheme it up. But he's a guy, I think, that athletically, he just he's going to win one-on-one matchups. He's going to be a better athlete than sometimes the guys that he's going against on the other side of the ball. So, yeah, I do think Parsons would make a lot of sense. And I know that you, you follow the mocks a lot closer than I do. I kind of envision him as being gone by 15. But if he's available, absolutely, he should be in the mix. Yeah, a lot of speculation as to who will fall. Uh, it's going to be an exciting night next Thursday night. We'll be there for you. Please, you know, tune in, join Patriots Unfiltered. We'll be live the first half hour on video, live recording podcast the whole time. So we hope you guys will join us. Plenty of analysis and, and good times. My colleague, Paul Perillo, will be back after the draft, maybe a little draft wrap up, see what the Patriots get. That's my favorite time of the draft year when you know, no more speculation. Right. I want to thank you guys for tuning in. Hit that subscribe button. Hope you join us next time. I'm Mike Dusso for Paul Perillo. We'll see you next time.